Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to be talking about lighting settings for rendering images in Clo. So, when we're creating our render images, which is those high quality images we save, we can also customize the lighting that we want to be in those images to help make them look more realistic, dramatic, or give them the feel of being in an environment. So in a previous video, we talked about how to save a render image and the basics of that. But in this video, we're really gonna be focusing on lighting. So here I have in my 3D window a garment that I'm done with, it's styled. I'm in high resolution mode. And so I'm gonna to switch to our render window by going to render at the top of my computer screen and then clicking render again. That brings me to our render window here. And I'm gonna open up our property editor um, because that's where we're gonna see all of the settings that I'm going to click on here. And our lighting settings are located here in this icon that's the light bulb with the gear wheel next to it. It's called light properties. Automatically, we're going to always have this dome light existing in our um, 3D space. That's what's lighting up our image right now. And so if I go to interactive render and start this by clicking here, I'm going to get a preview of what that dome light looks like. This is going to be your standard light. It might be okay for a lot of things. It might be exactly what you want, um, but you'll see there's a couple of presets here at the top. The first one is studio low contrast. This is um, the, the light setting that will automatically be applied. But if you click this drop down, there's some other options here of some presets you could choose from. So I could choose um, studio vivid, and you'll see that changes the lighting setting of my um, interactive render, that preview. If I choose um, Woodhouse, you'll see they're all going to be different and apply different types of lighting. Basically, as if a studio were set up with different types of lighting. And that's what it's going to be doing. And what it is doing when you're changing these presets it is actually changing this environment map, which is basically the studio lighting or the lighting setup. Um, here, the arrangements, the intensity, and that's an HDRI file. We can also adjust the light intensity. So if I like this lighting, but I want it to be a little softer, I can always bring it down or increase the intensity too. And then we can also adjust the light angle. So with HDRI files, um, adjusting the angle of our dome light is going to basically be rotating the lights around our avatar. So if I were to adjust the angle by 90 degrees, you can see it shifts where the light is pointed on our avatar. So you can adjust that too, depending on what side you want your avatar lit up. And then we also have the ground shadow down here. I currently have my background as transparent, so we can't see that ground shadow, but if you wanted to adjust the intensity, you could. For our dome light, we also have the option to add in custom HDRI files too. So if you don't like any of these presets that are in Clo, um, there's a website that we can go to for free that uh, has a ton of HDRI lighting files. The website is called hdri-haven and I'm going to link to it in the web um, in this video description. But basically what it is is a website where we can download different HDRI files, so basically different lighting settings depending on what we want. And so I have a couple downloaded and I'll show you how I can adjust those. So to change them, I'm just going to click on the plus symbol here next to our environment map. And that will pull up a finder window on my computer. This right here is basically the HDRI files that are listed in our presets that we have been clicking through. Um, but you could get to them this way also. But a couple of that I have downloaded, I just downloaded these two. And you can see they're HDR files. Um, so I'm going to just double click on one of them. And once that applies, 
I'll be able to see that lighting setting. So you can see that one is much brighter than what I originally had. But if I liked that lighting, I could bring it down to a lower intensity or adjust it. We can go to the other one that I downloaded also. And once that loads, we'll be able to see that there's really a lot of customization you can do with your renders with just HDMI or sorry, HDRI lighting settings. And so you can see make adjusting this light angle can make a really big difference. So playing around with this setting can help you a lot. I'm just going to switch back to one of the custom or the presets from Clo. I'm going to go to the low contrast, which is the default. And then we'll talk about the other types of lights we have in Clo too. So with our dome light right here, um, this is what's automatically in our file, but if I wanted to add in a different type of light, those different types of lights are listed right here on the right side of our toolbar. So I'm going to use this first one by clicking on it. This is called our rectangle light. And basically this is going to be shining light from this rectangle in the direction of this dotted line. So you can see right now it's pointing down below the ground, so it's not doing anything but I would use my gizmo tool here in the 3D window to adjust where I wanted it to be. Maybe I wanted it pointed on the side of this garment. So I'm using the gizmo tool to help move in specific directions because I find that more precise. But if I did want to just click and drag, I could always do that too. And so I'm just going to zoom in kind of right here so we can see what that light's doing. And so if I wanted to not see the light in my 3D window, I could always click this button right here that says show 3D. That would hide it from my 3D window. So if you're not seeing any of the lights, you can always turn that on. And then we have this light bulb here next to it that's called activate. That basically turns the light on or off. So right now it's off. And right now it's on. So make this one's making a very small difference, which if it's not making enough of a difference on your garment to do what you want, you can always move it closer and we can always adjust the intensity. So I'm going to change it to like 1.3. And now if I unactivate it, we can see a slight difference in the garment. Or I could adjust this a little bit and move it more towards the front. I'm going to rotate and just check that diagonal line to see where it's pointing. Because if it's not pointing on our garment, we probably won't notice much of a difference. And so this might be a time when you'd want to hide the light in the 3D window because now it is covering our avatar. So I'm just going to hide it. And hide it in our render window. And now we can really see the difference that light's making. So you can arrange these however you want them to be applied to your garment. But one other thing we can do is we can also adjust the color that the light is. So maybe I wanted a certain tone of a light, maybe some like warmer tones. I could click the, a color here and apply and that would adjust that lighting. 
And then I can also adjust the size of my light. So I'm going to show it again so we can see it. And just show you how I can adjust the size. So if I wanted it to be smaller or larger, that could also impact the intensity or the area of the garment that it is shining on. And so if you ever click off of your light and you can't figure out how to get back to it, you can always get back to the light settings by clicking on it in the 3D window. Um, but if it, you have it hidden and so you can't click on it, you can always go to the light settings here, the light properties that we are, were originally in. And that will open up all of your lights that you have. So when you click on those light properties, every single light you're using, our dome light that we started with, and our rectangle light we added will automatically be here. I'm going to show this, and I'm just going to delete it by clicking on it and clicking delete on my keyboard. Another type of light is our sphere light. And so when I add that, that looks like a sphere and I can move that and that shines directly down again towards that dotted line. So we can customize this the same way that we want that we did with our other rectangle light to be shining on whatever we want. And we can also adjust the intensity, color, and the radius of this light. I'm gonna delete that and then another type of light we also have is our directional light. This is um, similar to our rectangle light, but it is going to be more um, pointed in a certain direction versus our rectangle light was shining from the whole rectangle. This is going to be more from a center point. So we have a an intensity option and a color option here. A spotlight works very similar to the directional light, but it does expand as it gets further out, but it will be more intense closer. And then an IES light. This is going to be a little bit brighter appearing of a light and one that you might notice, even if it's not shining directly on where you are pointing that dotted line. So if I were to move it in slightly in front of my avatar like this, you can see in our render preview, it is really highlighting the area behind it. So um, we also have the intensity and the color adjustments there. And then the last type of light listed here is our dome light, which we automatically already have. It won't let us add another one. But if I wanted to turn off the dome light and only use other lights too, I can always hide this or act sorry unactivate it and that would unactivate it. and you can see that makes a really big difference but unactivating the dome light can be a really good way to see what your other lights are actually doing because for example with the dome light on i might not really notice that much of a difference of my rectangle light here But if I were to go to my light settings and unactivate the dome light now that I have this IES light and my rectangle light hidden, I can really see the difference of what that rectangle light is actually doing and what that IES light is doing too. So that can help you see really um, the impacts that your lights are having. And once you're done with your light settings, you can go into the image settings, make any adjustments you want, turn off interactive render and play render um, using the other render settings that we talked about in our basic rendering video to save your images. Um, and so that's the basics of adjusting our lighting in Clo.